Okay, so this is part 2.1 of the toad skeletal system, which deals with the pectoral girdle and the forelimb of your appendicular skeleton. So, uh, let's move on. Okay, so just to recap, so your appendicular skeleton, okay, particularly for the forelimb section, you have two main parts, which would be your pectoral girdle and, of course, your forearm. Now we're going to look at the closer view at just the forelimb, okay? There. So for the pectoral girdle, right off the bat, let's just discuss. So first, let us look at the orientation of this uh, figure. So this picture here, this would be if the toad was facing you. So that means this is the ventral view, okay? This is the dorsal view, and this is the side view or the lateral view, okay? This is the anterior portion, and this would be the posterior part. Anterior, posterior. Okay, anterior and posterior. So just to be clear. All right, so now let us discuss the part. So the first one, so this blue section here, that would be your um, clavicle. Okay, so that is the clavicle. So these blue areas here would be the clavicle. This big, uh, this bone here right at the center, which would be equivalent to the breastbone of the human, so guess what? The name is actually the same. It's the sternum. Alright? And then, um, this one, this green part, so these green bones here would be the coracoid. Alright? So that's for the ventral view. And then, of course, you can see here the one in red. That would be your scapula, okay? So, from the ventral view, you can see a lot of bones. And then, finally, this depression here would be a socket to which your forearm is attached, and that is called the glenoid fossa, okay? So, those would be the bones that you will see from the ventral view. Now, let's move on to the dorsal view, okay? So, technically, this time, the toad's back is facing you. And the most prominent uh, s structure that you will be seeing would be these two very broad bones that have cartilaginous extensions. This would be called the suprascapula. So, supra, from the word superior, which means above. Scapula, the scapula bone, as mentioned earlier. So, above the scapula. That's why it's called suprascapula. Okay? So, now let's move on to the side view. So, from the side view, again, the clavicle in blue, sternum in yellow, coracoid in green, a scapula in red, and the suprascapula here in its natural color. Okay? Or somewhat bleached. Now, this uh, light green... Okay, that again is the glenoid fossa, so I would just like to um, emphasize the glenoid fossa from this view, okay, because in the previous, or in the dorsal, I mean, sorry, the ventral view, yeah, maybe it's not that obvious. Okay, so how do you know? So, um, not all toad uh, pectoral girdles will look the same, and so sometimes... So you might think, how do you distinguish the clavicle from the coracoid? It's quite simple. All you really have to do is look at the thickness of the bone, right? And you would right off the bat say, well, the clavicle is found more anteriorly and it's thinner than the coracoid. Um, it doesn't always look like that. And so your main point of reference would be the glenoid fossa. To know which side is uh, anterior or posterior. So essentially, the glenoid fossa will always be facing posterior. The opening of the glenoid fossa will always point downward. Okay? So even if, let's say, we flip this entire pectoral girdle, you won't be confused which one is the clavicle and which one is the coracoid. Okay? There. Now let's move on to the forearm, or sorry, the entire forelimb. All right? So this entire blue bone here would be the arm bone, so it's called the humerus, okay? Now this socket, this part right here, is the one that attaches to the glenoid fossa. So like a ball and socket joint thing going on, this is the part of the humerus that attaches to the glenoid fossa, alright? 
This one in red is called the radio ulna. So from the fusion of the two bones, the radius and the ulna, so this time it's called the radio ulna. Right? The ones in uh, light green, that will be called your carpal bones. Okay, carpal bones. All right, or the wrist bones. The ones in yellow will be your metacarpals. All right, and then finally, these ones in pink would be your phalanges or phalanges, whichever way you want to pronounce it. Okay, so that's basically the forelimb. All right, there again, blue is the humerus, red is the radial ulna, green would be the carpals. Yellow would be your metacarpals, and then finally pink would be your phalanges. Okay? Let's move on. So this time, we're moving to part 2.2, which would be the hind limb, the pelvic girdle, and the hind limb. Okay? Again, we're still in the appendicular skeleton. So appendicular means appendage. Okay? So we're dealing with the appendages, the ones that are attached to the main frame, which is the axial skeleton. All right. So just a recap now, if we look at this entire toad skeleton, now we're looking at the parts enclosed in blue, which would be your hind limb and the pelvic girdle, okay? Now let's go. So first and foremost, this is the pelvic girdle in side view. This would be the anterior part and this would be the posterior part. All right? This would be the dorsal part. And this is the ventral part, okay? So now we are looking at this from the lateral view or the side view, okay? And then I noticed that it looks so much like the logo of Google Chrome. So this, the longest bone, which is the one in yellow, that is called the ilium, okay? The one in red would be your ischium or your ischium, whichever way you wish to pronounce it. The dark blue center is the acetabulum, and then this green one is the pubis, okay? So the combination or the fusion of your ilium, pubis, and ischium will give you the acetabulum. So what is the function of the acetabulum? Essentially, that is where your femur or your thigh bone is attached. So again, it is the socket to the joint, okay? It is the socket of the femur, all right? So to give you a uh, better view, let's look at next the hind limb, okay? So this is more anterior. This is uh, posterior, or you could say distal, farther away from the center of mass, okay? And proximal, closer to the torso, okay? So now, this light blue bone is the femur, all right, femur, okay? And then next is, again, the fusion of two bones, the tibia and the fibula. So this is called the tibiofibula, all right? This orange bone is tibiofibula. And then you have the ones in red and blue, Okay, sorry, the, it's a bit obscured here. So these ones, red and the very dark blue, those would be your tarsal bones, all right? And then this one in green, these ones in greens would be your metatarsal bones, all right? With the one, the darker green being the bone of the prehalux, which is called the calcar bone. And then finally, the ones here, the ones in very light pink are the phalanges ones again, all right? Now let us take a closer view at the tarsal bones, okay? So the one in red, okay, would be your astragalus, and the one in blue would be your calcaneum. And so you must be wondering, how did I know that? Quite simply, Remember this bone, the calcar bone, or the bone of the prehalux toe? Well, this is closer to the astragalus. So remember that always next to the calcar would be your astragalus, and the one that's on the opposite side would automatically be your calcaneum. 
All right, so just to recap, again, so let's look at this. Light blue is a femur, and then tibial fibula would be an orange. Red is the astragalus. Blue is the calcaneum. Light green would be your t um, metatarsals. And then dark green would be the calcarbone. And then finally, the light pink would be the phalanges. So together, astragalus and calcaneum form the tarsal bones. All right. So let's just uh, have a look at how they go together. So again, the skull, vertebral column, pectoral girdle, pelvic girdle, and the limbs. Ta -da -ta -da -da -ta -ta. All right, so that's how they would look like. I'm sorry, I don't have the rest of the limbs, but that's essentially the orientation. Okay, so I hope that this video helped you. So thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in future videos.